السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأولين والآخرين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد my dear viewers welcome to another live edition of Gardens of the Pious and today's episode by the grace of Allah is number 580 and MashaAllah, a new chapter in the book of Ad-Da'wat, chapter number 251. Uh, غيب, the virtues of praying for others in their absence. The excellence of making dua in one's absence. The author, Al-Imam uh, Al-Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on him, began this chapter with a couple beautiful ayahs. One of them is of Surah Al-Hash, and this is a beautiful surah. And the other is of Surah Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Surah Al-Hash is chapter number 59. This is ayah number 10. Before that couple ayahs, Allah the Almighty has been admiring and praising two categories of people. The first, Al-Muhajireen. When he said, الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِن دِيَارِهِمْ وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانًا وَيَنْصُرُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ He is referring to Al-Muhajireen, those who have been forced out of their homes. أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ And they were stripped out of their money. So their homes, their money, their businesses were confiscated. Why? Because they were forced out on account of their religious choice. Because of their belief. And that's why Allah Almighty said, يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانًا <coughs> Seeking a bounty from Allah and seeking his blessings. وَيَنْصُرُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ In order to support the deen of Allah, and the messenger of Allah, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ Such are the truthful ones. You know when somebody says, you're such an honest person, and you feel like admired, you feel like you're boosted, imagine when this admiration when this vouching your credibility is from Allah the Almighty. ذلك يوم ينفع الصادقين صدقهم ذلك يوم ينفع الصادقين صدقهم So on the day, the truthfulness will benefit the truthful ones by the end of Surah Al-Ma'idah ذلك يوم ينفع الصادقين صدقهم لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه ذلك الفوز العظيم so هذا يوم ينفع الصادقين صدقهم Allah is referring to the day of judgment on that day the truthfulness will benefit the truly truthful ones as a result of the truthfulness, yani they were true in their covenant with Allah, in their belief. They were sincere. لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٌ تَجِرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا This is on the Day of Judgment. Allah has prepared for them gardens beneath which rivers are flowing to abide therein eternally. Furthermore, رِضْوَانِي فَلَا أَسْخَطُ عَلَيْكُمْ أَبَدًا Allah will tell them when he will ask them do you guys need anything else? So they will say 
What else could we need? You've forgiven us our sins. You have mercy upon us. You admitted us to paradise. What could be more than that? He said, yes, there is more. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةً So they get more. What is more? They get to see Allah in heaven. May Allah make us among them. And what else? رِضْوَانِي My pleasure. So I will never be displeased with you. Because الْأَخِرَةُ دَرُ جَزَاءً the hereafter is the home of compensation, reward or punishment. It is not the home of work, tests and trials anymore. So, radiyallahu anhum, Allah is, defin is definitely pleased with them. Wa radu an, and they are pleased with Allah. Of course we are pleased with Allah. That is indeed the ultimate success. Qala Allahu hadha yamu yanfa'u sadiqina sadiquhum. May Allah make us among them. So Al-Muhajireen, all of whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them in Surah Al-Hashr, in ayah number 8, as Ula'ika humu sadiqoon Can anyone dare to say that the Muhajireen, or later on we'll learn about Al-Ansar, they were wicked, they were hypocrites, and he criticizes them? then whoever criticizes them has belied Allah and rejected what the Almighty Allah said in the Quran. So we say, رضي الله عنهم, all of them, Allah said it. Allah is pleased with them. Allah is happy with them and they are happy with him. They are very well pleased with him. Then the following ayah, ayah number nine, when those muhajireen left their homes, and they were poor, and they were broke, and they were grounded, they have nothing, and they migrated whether on foot, or uh, on the back of a camel, or whatever, and they reached Medina. Did they have a condo, a spare house, or a family? No, they didn't have blood relatives, but they had Al-Ansar, the supporters. So the Almighty Allah says in the following ayah, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَّأُوا الدَّارَ وَالْإِيمَانَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَاجَةً مِمَّا أُوتُوا وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصَةً وَمَنْ يُوقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ الَّذِينَ تَبَوَّأُوا الدَّارَ وَالْإِيمَانِ The original dwellers of Al-Madina مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ يعني الأنصار Now Allah, after admiring Al-Muhajirin, He is admiring Al-Ansar يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ They love those who migrated to their homes. And this love was in mere words. Rather, it was interpreted into actions. وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَاجَةً مِمَّا أُوتُوا وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصَةً I like to put وَيُؤْثِرُونَ first, then I get back to لَا يَجِدُونَ يعني when a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam established what is known as Ukhuwa, the brotherhood between Al-Muhajirin who were broke, they didn't have homes, they didn't have any money, and Al-Ansar who actually the world and lived in Medina, so it's their homes, their businesses, their uh, fields, their investment. So he made Ukhuwa between them, such as when he said to Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, you become a brother to Sa'd ibn al-Rabi'ah. Sa'd ibn al-Rabi'ah is one of Al-Ansar from Medina. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf is one of the Muhajireen. Sa'd says to Abdul Rahman, since you've become my brother, the brotherhood initially was, if any of whom were to die, the second, the other, will inherit from his wealth. Because they were as blood brothers and sisters. لا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما أوتوا ويؤثرون على أنفسهم. They give preference to them over their own selves, even though they were themselves in need. 
those who are well off and rich such as Sa'd ibn Rabi' said to Abdul Rahman ibn Awf 50-50 what is 50-50 did he tell him that if you want to live with me then you're going to pay 50-50 no you know in, in the west in America every time I go dining myself and my wife the waiter or the waitresses would normally ask the typical question when they present the check together or separate you find a boyfriend and a girlfriend or a couple sitting dining chatting kissing and hugging enjoying their time then at the time of the check both they say separate what happened to the love it's a meal you know you know no 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 love have nothing to do with spending this is different everyone spends out of their pockets al ansar when sa'd ibn rabi' said to abd rahman ibn awf 50 50 he wasn't asking him to pay 50 percent of the utilities or to pay 50 percent of the cost of living no he said you take half of my wealth you're broke take half of my wealth you're my brother and I have two houses check them out whichever one you like it's yours yes indeed that happened they give preference to themselves uh, they give preference to others to al muhajirin over themselves wallahi they did so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَمَنْ يُوْقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And whoever is protected against the covetousness and the miserliness, the stinginess of himself, such are the successful ones. May Allah make us among them. وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَاجَةً مِنْ مَأُوتُ Later on when the Prophet ﷺ would receive gifts or spoils, he would distribute and give al muhajirin more because they don't have and Al-Ansar didn't mind, they said, they are our brothers, let them take it, they are more in need. When we read in the books of Sirah about those companions, whether the first patch Al-Muhajirin, or the second patch Al-Ansar who received them and supported them, we dream of being with them, living with them, and we say, this is utopia. Did this really happen in reality? Wallahi, it happened. Not a single incident or two or three, multiple. The whole community have become like that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his favor upon him and upon the believers when he said, وَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ لَوْ أَنْفَقَتَ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مَا أَلَّفْتَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ أَلَّفَ بَيْنَهُ it is Allah who brought their hearts together, melted them in the melting pot of Iman and faith, and they became like one, one single heart, one single faith, one single belief. So if I give a bite to my brother, I taste it in my mouth, even though I didn't eat it. But because my brother ate it, and he's in need, and he's hungry, it made me so happy. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam achieved that by the grace of Allah. And that's why he said, it is Allah who united their hearts. It is Allah who brought their hearts together. Have you spent the whole wealth on earth in order to bring them together? You won't be able to. Yet Allah has united their hearts. Very unfortunate. I wasn't living there that time. Very unfortunate. I didn't get a chance to be with them. Okay, and what would you have done if you were living there? I would be like them or more. I would be like Sa'd ibn Rabia. For real? You really mean it? You sure? Well, we have the Syrian refugees. We have the Burmese refugees. We have the Palestinians. We have the Yemenis. Go ahead. Show your solidarity and support to them. You want to be like Al-Ansar? No, I like to be like Al-Muhajirin. <laughs> I like to take. Huh? And what did Abdul Rahman ibn Awf the Muhajir say to Sa'ad ibn Rabi'ah? He said, may Allah bless you in your wealth, in your family, and in your home. It will be sufficient to direct me to the market. I'm good at it. 
started working and earning. And by the help of Allah, he became a millionaire, started from the scratch due to giving in a charity. He makes whatever and he gives so much in a charity. So the barakah reached the extent that he said, if I flip a stone, I would find money beneath it. The barakah of giving in a charity. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا وَمَنْ يُوْقَشُحْ حَنَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ So initially in Ayah number 8, Allah said about Al-Muhajirin, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ And he labeled Al-Ansar by saying, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ such are the successful ones. And what about us? What about us? Do we even exist? Yes. In ayah number 10, Allah the Almighty said, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِن بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجَعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَؤُوفٌ رَّحِيمٌ oh, You can join the club. Be among those whom Allah referred to in a number 10. Those who come after Al-Muhajireen and after Al-Ansar. They want to become like them. So they say, now their duty is verbal. They make dua. What do they say in the dua? رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا O oh Allah, forgive us our sins. And forgive the sins of our brothers. الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ and Ansar, الصَّحَابَةِ التَّابِعِينَ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ And do not put in our hearts any hatred against those who have believed our Lord, you are indeed full of kindness, most merciful. Love those ayat of Surah Al-Hashr, brothers and sisters, subhanAllah. A friend of mine was traveling the other day, and you know now with the travel ban, and sometimes you reach the airport, and you get stuck, you know. Uh, maybe you won't find a flight, you will be sent back or you get stuck at the airport. So he was stuck and he said, I kept reciting Surah Al-Hashr, the last ayat of Surah Al-Hashr. So one of the officers said, you know what, I will help you out. And he put me on the flight, on his own responsibility. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, recite the Quran all the time, brothers and sisters. What do we owe Al-Ansar? What do we owe Al-Muhajirin? What do we owe Al-Tabi'in and all our predecessors? Dua. As a matter of fact, it is one of the rights of the believers upon each other to pray for each other. We don't know them. I don't know Uwais uh, al-Qarni. I mean, I know him, I heard of him, but I never met him. I know of Safiya Rahman Mubarak Kafuri, and I love him so much, I never met him. I know him from his book, Al-Rahiq al-Makhtoum, The Seal Nectar. So I love him without seeing him. Make dua for him. There are a lot of duaat, a lot of preachers, a lot of ulama whom we never met. But when you see their efforts in giving da'wah, when you watch their programs and their steadfastness on the truth and the true representation of the deen, I make dua for them in my sujood and tahajjud. I'm not being generous to them. I'm being as I'm supposed to be. It is the duty of a Muslim towards other Muslims to make dua for them بظهر الغيب and this is what this chapter is all about. And in Surah Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم in ayah number 19 chapter number 47 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله واستغفر لذنبك وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات This is a straightforward command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to 
make a stafar to seek forgiveness for whom? My parents, my offspring, my siblings, my family, for all the believing men and women. So in the beginning, he commanded an Nabi Wasallam with knowledge, learn, know, Ya Muhammad, that there is no ilah but Allah. And the second command is the action. Knowledge comes first, then action follows. What is the greatest act that we do, which we can benefit ourselves and all other believers, uh, whether we've met them or not, whether they live during our era or not, whether they will come after or they're living among us, making a step far for them. So every time you say, Allahumma ghfirli, hey, add to it, Rabbana ghfirli, wali walidayya, walil mu'minina yawma yaqoomul hisab. Forgive me and forgive all the believers. Forgive me and forgive my parents' sins and forgive all the believers. How many are they? Allah knows best. Billions. Each one of the believers, you included him in your dua, in this comprehensive dua, you will be rewarded for it. So this is a guaranteed millions or billions of thawab and hasanat and good deeds in a simple strike. When you say in your sujood, Beautiful. Beautiful. So include the believers, men and women, in your dua. And the greatest is istighfar. Because if you're forgiven, then you're successful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That's in Surah Al-Imran. So he's asking all of us to raise and to be good towards مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ مَغْفِرَةٍ مَغْفِرَةٍ is مَغْفِرَةٍ Forgiveness. دِنْ وَجَنَّةٍ مَغْفِرَةٍ دِنْ جَنَّةٍ there is no way you can jump this and skip it and go to the second. Maghfirah comes first. And we have learned together how the Prophet ﷺ once made a very powerful remark when he said, لا يدخل أحدكم الجنة عمله Your deeds will not be sufficient to admit you to paradise. None of you will be eligible to enter paradise simply because of how much good deeds you've done. So they said, uh, even you, because the Prophet ﷺ have done a lot. He used to stand up in the prayer until his feet would swell. He said, even me, unless if Allah showers me with his mercy. Maghfirah, then Jannah. Sabiqu ila maghfiratim min rabbikum wa jannatin. Surah Al-Hadid. Wasari'u ila maghfiratim min rabbikum. وجنتي. And now, بسم الله. Another beautiful dua in a beautiful ayah. This time, is presented by Abu Al-Anbiya, the father of the prophets, Ibrahim عليه السلام. In Surah Ibrahim, Allah the Almighty recounted the supplication of Prophet Abraham in ayah number 41 when he said, رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيَّ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْحِسَابِ Our Lord, there is a difference between رَبَّ اغْفِرْ لِي My Lord, رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لِي In the ayah it is رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لِي And you can say it either way. Our Lord, forgive me and my parents and all the believers, men and women, on the day when the reckoning will be established. And I just spoke about the virtues of such dua and how much reward you will get for supplicating for everyone. We benefit each other with very simple act, with a single strike. رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيَّ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْحِسَابِ my dear respected viewers, my lovely brothers and sisters, it's time to take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a couple minutes. Please stay tuned. <laughs>
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Our phone numbers beginning with the area code are 002-023-855-131 alternatively area code 002-0100-5469323 The WhatsApp numbers area code 001-347-806-0025 and finally area code 001-361-489-1503 I believe we have some callers. Assalamu alaikum. Ishraq from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ishraq, how are you doing? I'm doing just fine, alhamdulillah. And you, brother Ishraq? Alhamdulillah, I'm having a great life. So I wanted to ask a question. Yeah. Go ahead. So a few days, a few days ago, I was traveling at a long route. So at a time, uh, it was the work of Asar. So I stopped when it was already late, and a few minutes was left. So I did the wudu and stopped in front of a mosque. But when I went to the mosque, I saw that the mosque was closed. So I came back to the, the car, but I did not have time to move the car towards Qibla, but I knew where the Qibla was. But I didn't didn't have the time to move the car towards the Qibla, and I was in a hurry because the work was running out. Mm. So I prayed without heading to the Qibla. So I wanted to know that was my prayer even valid? Well, uh, Ishraq, unfortunately, this prayer was not valid for two main reasons. Number one, because you didn't face the Qibla and you know what is the Qibla. Number two, because you prayed in the car, which I assume that you prayed while sitting. And standing in the Fard prayer is one of the pillars. So if you don't have a reason, like if you're stuck in the plane, okay, this is a different story. The Qibla will not be an issue if you cannot find it. And also the standing, you can pray in your seat if you cannot stand up. But you found the masjid closed. You pray on the front yard of the masjid, on the slab, on the floor, on the dirt, on the sand. You don't have to have a prayer rug or janamaz because the Nabi said, The whole earth is a valid place to offer the prayer on. So you would have to repeat this prayer, Ishraq. Barakallah fikum. Luba from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum, Luba. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can I ask my questions? Yes, please go ahead. I have two questions. Uh, my first question is uh, someone told me if I'm sick, I can combine my prayer, mm. but I have to pray four rakah for that time. Like what? four rakah for the suhar and four rakah for the asr. Is it true? Yes, that is true. Uh, the Prophet وسلم, permitted us to combine the prayers, even if we're not traveling, but in cases of heavy rain, those who pray in the masjid, they can pray. If they attended the masjid for dhuhr, the Imam can just say, let's pray asr too, and you don't have to come for asr or maghrib and isha. Uh, people at home, sick people, especially those with chronic ailment, which is a bit difficult for them to make another wudu and to face the qibla. So go ahead and pray dhuhra and ask together at the time of either one, whichever is convenient. Likewise, the maghrib and isha, but you will pray full number of rakahs. Shortening the prayer is only in the case of traveling. Thank you, Ruba from Nigeria. Salheen from Canada. Assalamu alaikum, brother Salheen. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, how are you? Alhamdulillah, brother Salheen. Thank you for asking. Go ahead, please. Alhamdulillah. Uh, my question is a little bit long, if that's okay with you, Sheikh. Okay, go ahead and try to uh, shrink okay. it. 
Yeah, I'll try to give you like I'm just going to give you as much detail so you can uh, understand what's uh, the question. Okay. Um, so uh, the Sheikh, it's uh, regarding uh, national anthem uh, in uh, my back home country. Yeah. So in the lyrics of the national anthem, there are uh, words like uh, uh, your sky, your wind, and stuff like that. Mm. So in the songwriter is referring to the country by saying your. So. Mm. Is this considered shirk because uh, we know that sky and wind, all of this, all of these things belong to Allah alone? And mm. also, the songwriter was a Hindu, and you know the Hindus they refer to their idols as mother, and mm. the songwriter was referring to the country as mother as well. But so I, I heard a, a lecture that saying this is uh, shirk because when the songwriter refers to the country as mother. He's referring to his idol, like uh, the idols they worship, right? But there is no evidence that uh, the songwriter is referring no, to no, 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 their no. idol when they come. You know, uh, so, uh, uh, you know, not only your country, but Egypt, Saudi, Yemen, USA, they say, I I'm going to my mom. This is home, home sweet home. So people refer to their country the place in which they were born and raised as their mom not necessarily so it's not about who wrote the uh, the anthem and who wrote the song and the words whether muslim or not muslim the thing is when i say when i uh, in, in in the song it describes the sky of your country the weather of your country the country and its weather and whatever rises upon all belong to allah no one can deny it's only my only reservation in respect of that is nationalism because muslims we realize that the whole earth belongs to allah and he have made it subservient to us in surah al-mulk the almighty allah said the whole earth, our earth planet belongs to you, belongs to me, belongs to anyone. The USA, France, Europe, it belongs to all human beings. All those people occupy those soils and they've taken advantage of its resources. And the uh, indigenous uh, people, the native people have been fought against and kicked out of their homes. So not because you become nationalized of the North America, of the USA or Canada or any European country. Uh, it's just a country. Yes, I owe the country loyalty because it, it protects me, it serves me, it, it paves the road for me. It, uh, it, it makes my life easy. I belong to a country, I carry its passport. But it doesn't mean that we perceive one country better and superior to another. It's all the land of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abdullah from Canada. Assalamu alaikum. Abdullah from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum, doctor. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, okay, I uh, read somewhere that um, a man burped, and uh, he was told that the one who eats his fill will be um, the hungriest on the day of judgment. Now my problem is I I really don't uh, want to eat sometimes, and my parents, if they force me to eat, I reject. So uh, they you, you get upset. Be, you I must be like skinny. I, huh? you, you must be skinny. That's why they want to feed you, right? Well, well, uh, how I much, guess. How much do you weigh? Well, 60, I, I'm about 65? 70. Yeah, it's about. No, I'm not. Yeah, but but the thing is, um, because of this, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. What if on the day of judgment, you know, and I feel like okay. I'm, I'm uh, I, disobeying my parents as well. I'm, I'm glad your parents love you so much that they want to overfeed you, but you can convey my message to them. Well, love isn't about overfeeding a person. You know, if you love somebody, let them eat what they like, as long as it is halal. And do not force anyone uh, to uh, eat more than what they want. That is not proper, as a matter of fact. 
uh, and I know this is purely cultural. And that's why when we invite Americans to our countries, and uh, we want to show them hospitality, so they all say, no, eat more. You know, some of them, I remember Yusuf Estes got really offended once when people were pushing, you got to eat more, wallahi, wallahi, and everyone is saying wallahi. I had it. That's it. I'm full. You don't understand. So tell your parents, it's not about how much you eat. It's about eating healthy food. It's about eating healthy food. Uh, if, if you're one of those who eat because you love to eat, it's not the cause of making a person starving or hungry on the day of judgment. Because Allah the Almighty said in the Quran, when Ahlul Jannah set their foot in Al Jannah, He said, لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٌ So it's not overeating which will make you uh, not enter Al Jannah. And if you enter Al Jannah, there is no starvation. There is no thirst whatsoever. Okay? But the, the Sunnah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, بِحَسْبِ ابْنِ آدَمَ لُقَيْمَاتٍ يُقِمْنَ صُلْبَ It's very healthy advice though. It is sufficient to eat what will make you capable to continue working. So we eat to live. We don't live to eat. And in one hadith, he divided the meal as follows. He said, the stomach, you should spare one third of the stomach for air. So if you eat, only one third for the food, one third for the drink, and the remaining one third for air. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Saadiya from the USA, Sister Saadiya, welcome to uh, the program. Sister Saadiya. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, go ahead with my question. Yes. Okay. So I um um during my prayers wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa Please. Thank you. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, Sister Saadiya. I'm waiting for your question, please. Okay. So, um, okay. I am um, during my prayers, like Zohar or Asir, any regular prayer, you pray to Rakah, you pray to, um, when you pray the first two, Makat, you recite Fatiha and then Surah. So the third one, usually I forget and then I will say after Fatiha, I will say Bismillah, thinking I will have to add Surah. And after I say Bismillah, I remember and then I just cut the Bismillah short and then go to my Ruku. Do I have to do any um, um sujood of forgetfulness? No, you don't have That's to. The you don't have to. Oh, okay. The recitation okay, after Al Fatiha in the first and second Raka'ah is Sunnah. So if you forgot what to recite, you don't have to pray so do do so. Thank you, Sister Saadiya from the USA. A beautiful hadith, maybe you can wrap up this beautiful gathering with. Hadith number 1494. An Abid Darda sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ما من عبد مسلم يدعو لأخيه بظهر الغيب إلا قال الملك ولك بمثل This is a sound hadith which is collected by Imam Muslim and narrated by the great companion Abu Darda رضي الله عنه He said, I heard the messenger of Allah peace be upon him saying Whenever a Muslim supplicates for another Muslim in his or her absence, an angel will say, may the same be for you too. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That's such a great deal. Why? Because the word Ameen, the word Ameen means, O oh Allah, accept. Amen. And when somebody 
is making dua and we're looking for righteous people to say ameen because when the righteous people say ameen or accepted. Correct? Yes, we all believe so. What about if the one who's supplicating for you is an angel? Whom Allah the Almighty described as saying, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون In another ayah, بل عباد مكرمون عباد مكرمون Honorable, noble servants of Allah. They never commit innocence, they're infallible. So when they make dua for you, enjoy it. Their dua will be accepted. So if you want anything good to happen to you, the shortest cut is to make dua for somebody else in their absence. Somebody is sick and you say, Oh Allah, cure so and so. Give shifa to my brother or to my sister. An angel next to you is saying, Ameen, Ameen, walaka bimith, and oh Allah, give him similar to what he asked for his or her brother or sister. You see, when we, when we learn a hadith, when we hear of a hadith, we want to fetch out the treasures in this hadith. So it's not sufficient to pass by and say, yeah, yeah, so the angel will say, walaka bimithla, and that's it. No, an angel making dua for you is such a big deal. And I can simply make an angel make dua for me anytime and all the time. Some people I know by name, I include them in my dua and I don't even tell them. Zakir Nayak, Yusuf Estes, uh, uh, Mufti Ismail Mank, Sheikh uh, Haytham Haddad. We have a beautiful brother, Iyad Qunaybi. Uh, these guys are working hard to propagate the message of Islam. I don't have to tell them. I mean, I just did on air, but I, I didn't tell them before. Huh? In your sujood, you make dua for them. What do you say? Oh, Allah grant them success. Oh, Allah make their speech efficient. Make them successful. Make their da'wah accepted. Grant them sincerity. Protect them because there are a lot of enemies around them. All the dua you're making for them, the angel will say, وَلَكَ بِمَثْلِ and similar of that for you, lucky you. So we have beautiful means of making our prayers accepted, responded, and answered, which is via making dua for others. ما من عبد مسلم يدعو لأخيه بظهر الغيب إلا قال الملك ولك بمثل. You know, Sheikh uh, Haytham Haddad. You know, he's he's a cancer survivor. And last time when I saw him, we were all crying because we assumed we were not going to see him again. And everybody was saying, please don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone. Bilal Phillips, a month ago, uh, he was in the ICU because of COVID. And this is serious though, you know, in case, God forbid, a respiratory failure take place, the person is dead, you know. So subhanallah, when I say, brothers and sisters, make dua for Sheikh Bilal, make dua for Haytham al-Haddad, for this or that. I really mean it. So last time we visited Pakistan, and there I saw Haytham al-Haddad was me. And mashallah, he was much more active than any of us. Mashallah, he regained his hair, he regained his health. This is a person whom we thought, that's it, we're not going to see him again. Alhamdulillah, we saw him again. The power of dua, you never know. Out there, there is somebody whose dua is accepted. So when we remind each other, this person might be unknown in the community, has zero capacity. Abdun, taqiyun, naqiyun, khafi, he's pious. He's self-sufficient, he's pure, and khafi, khafi, he's hidden. Nobody knows about him. Nobody knows about his righteousness. Nobody knows about the ahwal, the connection between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he raises his hands and say, Oh Allah, Allah immediately deliver. 
اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار By that we've come to the end of today's edition of Gardens of the Pious Until next time Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Give his best religion to them. So why did they ignore that? 